Topps Project 2020 is all the rage. And as a collector, I absolutely love this set. But as an investor, if you're getting into the game now, I think you're better off putting your money elsewhere. My name is Jeff Wilson. By day, I invest in tech companies. And at night, I invest in sports cards. Join me on my journey to profit from the hobby we all love. Hello, sports card investors, and welcome to another episode. Boy, this episode is going to kick up some controversy today. I can already feel you on your keyboards about to leave comments on this YouTube video about how you disagree with the words that I am about to say today. Because how dare, how dare I talk badly about Topps Project 2020? Yes, I know it is the hottest thing going in the sports card market. And yes, I know that many of you have already made a lot of money from an investment standpoint on Topps Project 2020. But I think those days are soon going to be behind us. And I do not think Topps Project 2020 is going to have the rosy future that many of you still think it will. And I'm going to explain why in a moment. But before I get into that bad subject, let me tell you about something happy. I'm going to tell you about, about this box of Bowman 2020 because I'm excited. This is a, a jumbo hobby box of Bowman 2020. It's got three autographs in it full thick of cards, and I'm excited to bust into this and try to find some Jason Dominguez cards and other great players from Bowman 2020. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be doing that this upcoming Wednesday night, and I'm going to be giving 100% of the cards inside it away to free, away for free to members of my membership program. Just as I do every two weeks, I break boxes of the latest cards, and I give all the cards away for free to my members. If you would like to be part of this, you can check out my membership program. As long as you sign up by Wednesday, you will be part of that. And of course, you can always sign up by going to sportscardinvestor.com and clicking on membership in the main menu bar. It's a fun live stream. I'm giving that away. I'm giving a bunch of other cards away as well. Hope to have you as a member. But let's talk today about the subject at hand. Let's talk about Topps Project 2020. Now, I want to be very clear on a few things from the beginning here, and I need you to listen to me because I know some of you are already starting to type your comments, so I need you to listen to me, okay? The first thing I'm going to say is, as a collector, I love Topps Project 2020. It is a beautiful set of cards. I love the concept of taking art and marrying it with sports cards. I am a big supporter of that concept. I think art has a place in the sports card world. I think sports cards have a place in the art world. Seeing the two come together, I think it's absolutely fabulous. I love it as a collector. I love it as a collector. I have problems with it as an investor, but I love it as a collector. Also, I recognize that a lot of you watching this video have probably already made really good money on Topps Project 2020. If you were early on Topps Project 2020, if you were buying some of the cards when they were first coming out, especially some of the earlier released cards, you have made unbelievable return on your money. And I've covered that in some of my other videos. I mentioned Topps 2020 actually even just a couple days ago when I did my top five video of the week. So I recognize a lot of people have made money. I also do think there are still some opportunities to make money, but you have to be very, very selective and very strategic about what cards you're going to go after and when you're going to go after them. Now, I will tell you that in my Market Movers Facebook group for my members, there's been a lot of analysis posted in that group. And one particular member in particular, his name is Derek Summers. He did awesome analysis of all of the cards that have come out on Topps Project 2020 so far and where he thinks investment opportunities still lie. I believe that there are still some Topps 2020 cards that will go up in value, but it's very selective and it's not, it's not going to be an easy deal anymore where you can just buy a bunch of the cards and expect them to go up in value. So, you know, I also think, by the way, that there may be some money made in trying to build out a complete set because I think when we finally get through all of the cards, people who can offer a complete set and be some of the first people to offer a complete set of all 400 cards, those people are probably going to get really good returns on their complete set. So I want to put all those disclaimers out there in the beginning because now I'm going to tell you about why I don't think it's a good investment 
for most people. And why, if you're just simply trying to go in and buy up a lot of the cards that have already come out and cards that are going are going to be coming out in the future, I think you're making a mistake. So before I get into my reasoning on that and my evidence, let me first just talk a little bit about what Topps Project 2020 is for those of you who aren't fully familiar. So Topps came out with a special set. It started a few months ago. These are all being sold on Topps website, tops.com. They're direct to consumer uh, uh, cards that they're selling. And they're putting up, uh, there's gonna be 400 total cards. They've taken 20 iconic baseball cards and they're having 20 artists redo those 20 iconic baseball cards. So eventually, each of these 20 iconic baseball cards will have 20 different art variations of it. They're releasing, uh, they're releasing these cards two per day on their website, Monday through Friday, and they're going up for sale on their website for 48 hours. So this, this has already been taking place for the last few months. This will continue to be taking place for most of the year. So as we get into the later part of the year, there will still be cards from this collection that are hitting Topps website for sale uh, two per day. So over the course of, uh, you know, per, uh, and uh, five days per week. So again, 400 total cards will be sold over the course of this year as part of Topps Project 2020. Now, at first, when these cards first started to hit the market, most collectors and investors were not paying a lot of attention. And that is part of the reason why some of these cards are now going for crazy prices. So we go to Topps website, this is showing us what some of those very first Topps 2020 cards that ever came out were. The Koufax and the uh, Ichiro Suzuki were the first two cards to be sold from this collection, followed by the infamous Mike Trout Art by Ermsey card. This one's been going for crazy prices. And this Jackie Robinson card. And then you got this Ken Griffey Jr. card. So these are all of the early cards that came out. Uh, and of course, these cards came out a few months ago. So not a lot of people were paying attention to these cards when they first came out. So not a lot of them were sold. In fact, if you look on Top's website, it shows you the print runs. So of this Sandy Koufax card, only 1,135 were purchased. Because what happens is Topps puts these on their site and however many they sell in 48 hours, that's how many they print. So, you know, they could, you know, if, if the card's not very popular, like these first ones weren't, they only sold 1,135. This Trout card uh, was uh, a print run of 2,911. This Jackie Robinson card was a print run of 1,302, et cetera. And in fact, if you go to Beckett's website, they have a very nice summary of the print runs of all of these cards in the order that they came out. So you can see right here that these early cards were having print runs. Most of them were sub 2000. You had a couple because the players were real popular, uh, you know, the Mike Trout and the Ken Griffey Jr. that went over 2000, but most of these were under 2000 in the print run. But as the days went on, and collectors and especially investors started to realize, wait a minute, what's going on with this Topps Project 2020? Is there investment potential here? Could I make money on this? People started flooding to Topps website. And all of a sudden, you, start, you started to see print runs increase. We had a Derek Jeter that almost hit 10,000. We had a Mike Trout that went up to 13,000. We still had a lot with lower numbers, but then we had a Mike Trout that hit almost 35,000 in terms of the print run. And then all of them have started to get huge in recent days. These are the last few days worth of these cards being released, the last week. And look at the print runs, 20, almost 26,000, almost 34,000, almost 15,000, almost 9,000, almost 21,000, almost 18,000, 10,000, you know, almost 12,000, almost 9,000, uh, almost 12,000. So you can see all of a sudden, everybody out there is aware of Topps Project 2020. And all of a sudden, this set that used to be a very limited edition set, you know, with only a couple thousand of each of these cards printed at most in the early days, now all of a sudden we're seeing 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, I'm sure we'll be at soon, of these cards uh, being sold uh, through Topps website as they're coming out. So it is no longer a limited print run set going forward. Uh, but it was, you know, it was in the very, very beginning. Um, so <laughs> I don't like anything about this. I don't like anything about this other than the cards themselves, which are absolutely beautiful. So let me, let me just ask you a couple of questions. If you're, if you're thinking that you still want to get in on Topps Project 2020 and you still think there's potential, whether it's buying the current cards coming out, which now have humongous, insanely sized print runs or whether it's buying some of the original cards, which have very small print runs, but now have gone up 
to insane prices, which we're going to see in a minute. Let me just ask you a few questions. So my first question that I'm going to ask you is, once there are 20 of every single one of these cards released, is it going to water down the interest and in the supply uh, or water down the interest in, in accumulating supply? So everyone's chasing Mike Trout's cards. Everyone's chasing Ken Griffey Jr.'s cards. There's a few of them out, a few of them. But by December, they're going to have 20 different artists having recreated that same exact card 20 different times. Every single card in this set will be recreated 20 different times. Is that going to water down interest in any particular card? What will stop Tops from doing this again next year and the year after and the year after that? Because this is certainly proven to be a massive success story for Tops, and I'm sure they're making a ton of money off of it. So what happens when there's Tops Project 2021 and Tops Project 2022? What happens when there's 100 trout cards with different designs? And maybe they won't go back and do the same trout card again. Maybe they'll do a different trout card at some point in time. But could they do another trout card at some point in time? Sure they could. Could they do another Ken Griffey card? Sure they could. Or even if they don't, are they going to do cards of a whole bunch of other players and get 20 of each of those cards? I think it's going to come. Now, I have no inside information that Tops is ever planning on doing this again, but my business sense tells me that this has been a huge success for them and we're going to see a lot more of this in the future in some form. What is the relevance of this set when sports returns to TV? When there's actual games being played, when we're actually talking about players that are actually in games or is the attention that's being paid to this start to drop? And even more so, would this have ever been this relevant in the first place if there were sports on TV? Would anyone really have chased Topps Project 2020 to the degree that they're chasing it now? Would there really have been this much hype? Would people really have cared or noticed if new sets were coming out featuring current day players, and we were watching sports on TV, and we were buying and selling and, and going after the players who were actually doing big things. The NBA playoffs should be going on right now. You know, MLB should be well into swing in their season, and we should be starting to see who's emerging, you know, as, as this year's stars and, you know, getting ready for the all-star break that would be coming up. Uh, would any of this matter? If that were all happening, I think it would sort of, it would probably matter some, but certainly not to the same extent. What relevance will all of this have 10 years from now? What relevance will Topps Project 2020 have in the sports card world 10 years from now? And what if there's a Topps Project 2021 and a 2022 and there's, you know, 50 My Trout cards that have been recreated with art what relevance will this particular set have 10 years in the future? I know Mike Trout's rookie cards are going to be relevant 10 years from now. I know they will be very relevant. Do I think Mike Trout's Project 2020 card will be relevant 10 years from now? To some people. It's not going to be like having the first prism. <laughs> it's not going to be that. And it's not going to be like having a rookie card. It's not going to be that either. I don't think. These are all my opinions. I'm making guesses. I'm projecting. I'm looking into the future. I'm telling you why I feel the way that I do. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But in my opinion, 10 years from now, I don't see this set being this groundbreaking set that everyone is chasing and paying the prices that they are today, especially considering that a lot of these cards are now getting to print runs that are 30,000 plus as the set continues to build. Okay, let me show you something even more striking and something that really should make you question everything when it comes to Topps Project 2020. Here's what I want to show you. We all know how this has been a runaway financial success for people who bought these cards early. This is that Mike Trout uh, Art by Ermsey card. So the fourth card to come out in the set, there were only 2,911 of this card produced. So it's a very limited print run compared to a lot of other sports cards that come out today, right? And in, and in the early days on the secondary market, right when this started to hit eBay at the beginning of April, 
Um, you know, these cards could be had for about 30 bucks, for about 35 bucks. They started to go up a little bit and then they just started to go up and up and up. And they were, by the end of April, these cards were up at around over $200, $250, $300 in early May. And then they just started to climb and climb and climb and climb and climb and climb. And they got all the way up to about $500 on May 21st. They got all the way up to about $500 a week ago. And then this past week has been an absolute ridiculous explosion of these cards to the point where these cards most recently are now at $2,500 for this card. $2,500. And there are many sales of this. This is not just one freak auction or one freak sale. And this is not just one buyer or one seller who is attempting to fix the market. There are several sales of this card each and every day that are showing this increase in price and price and price. So let me do a little something. This Mike Trout card, this Project 2020 card is a, is a design of his infamous 2011 Topps Update card. And it's it's a nice looking card. This is the card, I just brought it up on the screen. Uh, you can see, you know, this is, a, it's, it's a cool, I like the art, the art's cool. And it's a redesign of his 2011 Topps Update card, which is one of the most iconic baseball cards in the modern era. If not the most iconic baseball card, is, I, I think the Mike Trout 2011 Topps Update card has to be the most iconic baseball card certainly in the last 10 years, you can make an argument for the last 20 years. Maybe some people would argue maybe Jeter's rookie, but it's on up there. The Trout 2011 Tops update is on up there. So why don't we compare the price of the 2020 Mike Trout artistic recreation of the 2011 Tops update to the actual 2011 Tops update. The pink line on your screen is the 2020 Topps Project 2020 card, the recreation of the of the Topps update. The dark line at the top of your screen is the actual Topps update card in PSA 10, gem mint, the best of the best of that particular 2011 Topps update card in gem mint. And the price of the 2020 Topps Project 2020 recreation of the card has now equaled, equaled the price of the original Mike Trout rookie card in PSA 10. They are the same price. They are the exact same price at this moment in time on the secondary market. Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a moment of silence. Let's take a moment of silence to remember what time was like before the sports card market went completely crazy and people lost their damn minds on top project 2020. A moment of silence. That is insanity. If you are buying Topps Project 2020 Mike Trout cards for the same amount of money that you could buy his actual 2011 rookie card in PSA 10, you have lost your damn mind. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> you've lost your mind. Seriously, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, 50 years from now, which one do you think is gonna be worth more? I got a clue. It's not the Topps Project 2020 card. I mean, come on, come on, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, now some people might say, well, there was only 2,911 of that, you know, Topps Project 2020 made. Okay, well, the pop report, the PSA 10 pop report on the Trout 2011 card is 4,775. So yeah, it's more. There's more in the pop report out there, but not a ton more. Not a ton more. But let me show you something even more ridiculous. Let me show you something that when I saw this and I, I just, I felt the pain in my chest I don't even know what to make of this or how to explain this. Let me show this to you. Let me show you Ichiro Suzuki's Topps Project 2020 card. 1972 of this card created. This was, of course, a recreation of his famous Topps rookie card. 
Nice card. By the way, this is also Ermsey who did the art on this card. Cool artist. This card's neat. One of the best looking cards out there in terms of Topps Project 2020. Vivid colors, cool design. I like this card a lot. It's a neat card. This card has followed a similar pattern to Mike Trout's card in terms of how this has gone wild on the secondary market. With this card being as little as $30 back in early April when it first started trading on the secondary market, then it started to rise. And by the beginning of May, this card was, well, we only had one day where it went up a little bit. For the most part, this card stayed kind of down for a while. It actually started to rise uh, as we got a little bit into May. Uh, around you know May 6th, May 7th, May 8th, we started to see this card approach $200. It finally broke the $200 barrier on May the 12th. And then we started to see its crazy run up start about a week ago as well, where all of a sudden this card has climbed to $1,032 in recent days. $1,032 in recent days that this card has sold for. $979 the day before that. Again, we have multiple sales of this card. We have multiple buyers. We have multiple sellers. There's actual activity, lots of buying and selling activity around this card. It's not just one freak sale. This card has hit $1,032. Let me compare this card to the actual card that is designed after. Ichiro Suzuki's actual tops rookie card in PSA 10 and raw. The PSA 10 of the Ichiro Suzuki rookie card, this is 2001 tops, is this top line on your screen. The second line on the screen, the yellow line, is the Topps Project 2020 art card. And the third line on the screen, the pink line, is Ichiro Suzuki's Topps rookie card from 2001 raw, so ungraded. The art card, the Proje Topps Project 2020 art card has now surpassed the PSA 10 Ichiro Suzuki rookie card. But here's where it gets crazier. There are only 117 PSA 10s in existence of Ichiro Suzuki's 2001 Topps card. It is one of the hardest rookie cards to find of a star player of a Hall of Fame player. There are 117 that graded Gem Mint 10. And it is now less valuable than the 1,972 cards that exist of the artist recreation from Topps Project 2020. By the way, there's only 750 of that Ichiro 2001 Tops card in PSA 9. It is an extremely difficult card to find in great condition. One of the most difficult cards to find in great condition. And you could buy three of that card in PSA 9. Three. There's only 750 in the world of his actual rookie card from Tops. You could buy three PSA 9 or you could buy one artist recreation of that card from 2020, of which there are 1,972. You've lost your damn mind, people. <laughs> You've lost your damn mind. That's all I gotta say. That's all I have to say. So again, I have Topps Project 2020. It is a beautiful set of cards. I love the cards. As a collector, I love the cards. As an investor, I'm shaking my head. But that's cool. You guys keep chasing your Topps Project 2020. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go buy the rookie cards. I'm going to go buy myself a Mike Trout rookie. I'm going to go buy myself an Ichiro Suzuki rookie. I'm going to go do that. Those are the cards I want because you know what? Those are the cards that are actually going to be worth something substantial in five years, 10 years, 20 years, 50 years. All right. I'm off my soapbox for today. That's my Topps 2020 analysis, my Topps Project 2020 analysis. Ah. <sighs> Felt good to get that one off my chest. I've been holding that one in all week. Man, 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 man. Anyway, I would love to hear what you think. Tell me in the comments below. I'm sure many of you already have because I know this is a spirited topic to be discussing. I know many of you love this set. And so I would love to hear what you think in the comments below. Please leave me the comments. 
And, and I would love for you to check out my website, check out my membership program, sportscardinvestor.com. By the way, tons of great free articles on my website. Even if you're not a member, lots of great free articles on my website that we put new articles up every few days about sports card investing, totally worth checking out. And if you do click the membership link on sportscardinvestor.com and become a member before Wednesday, I'm going to include you in the opportunity to win your way into this card break. So we're going to be breaking that. I'm going to be giving all the cards away from members. So you'll have a shot. You'll have a shot along with my other members of winning cards in that card break I'm doing next Wednesday. Would love to have you as part of that. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching today. Hope you have a good next couple of days here, and I'll see you back this weekend with my next episode. Take care.